Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. I've got a few pocket pistols on the market, a little bit on the larger side. I've got the FN Reflex, I've got the Springfield Hellcat. This is the newest from FN, this is a little bit newer. And I've got the old standby, the Glock 26. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis Axe and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links, it will often save you money never will cost you any additional money and helps the channel. And please consider supporting the channel on Player, formerly Utreon, where we can do some types of videos that are no longer allowed on YouTube. Now as far as pocket carry, I mean these could be inside the waistband or any other position, but the Hellcat is actually relatively thin at one inch and so is the FN Reflex. The Glock's a little bit thicker at 1.3 inches and both the Springfield and the FN got a grip sleeve on them. When you've got bigger hands, sometimes it's a little harder to hold on to those super thin things. So they're Hogue grip sleeves that kind of make them a little bit thicker. That may defeat the purpose of going with a thinner gun, but at the same time, that's your choice whether you put that on or not. The Glock is 1.3 inches, whether you like it or not. That's just the size of it. The FN that you see right now and the Hellcat that's behind it come in an optics-ready version. As of the making of the video, the Glock does not have an optics-ready version of the 26. That may change, but that's one of the things that might be the topic of this video is innovation. So the Glocks have been relatively unchanged for many years. They've gone through a few generations, but they've changed minor things, mostly, mostly focusing on whether or not you have finger grooves. So this one's a Gen 5 and it doesn't have the finger grooves, and it has replaceable back straps. The Gen 4s had the replaceable back straps, and they had finger grooves. They did add front serrations, but overall, the Glocks have not changed a whole lot. You might look at it from, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and I'm sure that's Glock's concept behind some of their decisions on the Glock. These are very, very reliable. They're proven, and they do work. But at the same time, if we go to something like this Hellcat, what they're doing now in this Hellcat is 11 rounds in basically the same footprint as the 10 round Glock as far as height and length, but thinner. So let's talk about height and length. The smallest of the guns from a height perspective is this Hellcat. It comes in at four inches you know, with its flush mag. The Reflex that I've got sitting here comes in just a little taller at 4.27. And you can see it sitting there again with its flush mag and it's almost unnoticeable. And the Glock actually sits in between with 4.17. So I'll get the magazines in it and I'll turn them. You can kind of see shortest, a little bit taller, a little bit taller. Now in the grand scheme of things, when we're talking about a difference of 0.27 inches, quarter inch, let me see if I can turn them up a little bit. We're talking a difference of a quarter inch. That may not be significant. And one of the things that's going to look different too on the Glock, it looks shorter than it is because the grip angle is different. So both of the Springfield and the FN have more conventional grip angles like most pistols. The Glock has a slightly different grip angle. It gives it the appearance of being shorter. But overall, these are close enough in size as to not make much of a difference at all. Now from a weight perspective, there is a very noticeable difference in weight starting with the uh, chunkiest of all, which is the Glock at 21.69 ounces, moving down to the FN Reflex, which is over here, which has 18.4 ounces, and then the most svelte of all of them is the Springfield at 17.9 ounces. Now that's not counting ammo. You know, when you put ammo in it, the weight's gonna go up, but you're in control of that, how much you load them. So Glock has 10 rounds in its flush mag. Springfield has 11 rounds in its flush mag and the FN Reflex has 11 rounds at its flush mag. Now, the Glock will support the 15 round, the 17 round, and on up magazines. And because the aftermarket's been around for the Glock a long time, it goes way up in total capacity. But one disadvantage to the Glock, and this has kind of remained unchanged over the years, though it is compatible with all of the other mags that fit a Glock, there's really no fact, there are no factory pinky, ex or not pinky extenders, no factory sleeves. And though there are third party sleeves out there, I've tried a couple of them, none of them integrate well. They work, you know, they kind of fill in this gap, but they don't integrate with the grip really, really well. When you look at like the FN Reflex, and it's got its flush 11 round magazine, 
also has a pinky extender or pinky extender magazine, but it doesn't add any capacity. It just kind of gives you almost a full three finger grip, but you still have the 11 rounds. Then you go up to the extended mag, which current largest mag available for the reflex is 15 rounds. That may change over time, but even there you see you, you have decent integration. It kind of molds well. Now, don't mind the color difference because this whole grip is influencing that. The color does actually blend well and the pattern of the grip blends perfectly. So this does match the grip if the, gri if the hogue grip wasn't on here, if the sleeve wasn't there. Now, the current capacity winner for factory capacity, not counting aftermarket, and blending in with the grip, 11 rounds with the flush mag. There's also a pinky extender mag for this that has 11 rounds as well, and it adds the, you know, the front pinky. But why would you do that when you can go right to the 13 round magazine, which is roughly the same footprint as the pinky extender, and it does blend well, and now you've got 13 rounds pretty much in a almost a three finger grip. But we have a 15 round magazine. It's not a whole lot bigger than the 13 round, but you can see it's a full three finger grip and it does kind of hang down a little bit. And just recently, they announced a 17 round magazine. And that gives you a nice blended grip, but full 17 rounds. Now you might notice that there's two sleeves on this. This 17 round magazine and the 15 round magazine I showed you also work in Hellcat Pro. So with the sleeves, they've, they've designed it. So if you have the sleeve, you can take the 17 round magazine, use it in either without the sleeve in the Pro or with the sleeve in the regular Hellcat, the smaller Hellcat. So right now, the capacity winner for factory supported integrated magazines uh, is the Hellcat. The FN will probably catch up. And Glock, though it has the ultimate more capacity, it doesn't have that blended grip and some of the bigger magazines are not factory. So again, when you start looking at concealed carry, those big magazines tend to be not what you're looking for. If you're looking for those bigger magazines and you're going to carry it with that bigger magazine in it, you're probably already looking at a, either a compact or a full-size gun to begin with. Current street prices for these are fairly similar. The Hellcat and the FN are $499 and the Glock is currently around $529. Now keep in mind street prices are going to vary. By the time you watch this video, it may be different, may be different in your area, but it just kind of gives you a comparative. What that comes down to is price is not going to be a significant factor in your choice between these. From a safety perspective, all of these are very similar from safeties. They have the inertial toggles in one form or another. The, this does it with the pivoting trigger. The FN does it with the pivoting trigger, but they have the inertial protection. They have the internal drop safeties. So they're all test, they're all designed to be drop safe weapons. The Glock has had been extensively tested, people doing very horrible things to it, dropping it out of helicopters and stuff like that. And it's its internal safeties are well proven. As far as the other two, they just haven't been around long enough to have been tortured that way. But I've not heard of either one of these having unintentional discharges. There is one noticeable difference between the two of these that actually ends up not being all that noticeable, or three of these. So the Hellcat and the Glock are striker-fired guns. The FN Reflex is an internal hammer-fired. However, it behaves a lot like a striker-fired from a trigger perspective. From a sights perspective, other than the advantage that the FN and the Hellcat have of having an optics-ready version, the sights are similar. The Glocks tend to be just the U-dot. These are just white dot sights. You have a fiber optic with tritium on the FN and on the Springfield, different color inserts, but they have the inserts so that you can see them clearly. And you have a U dot or a U at the back and uh, two dots on the back of the FN reflex. Both, all three of these sites are well functional and usable. All of the sites are replaceable and the aftermarket is large enough for all three of these that you're going to get whatever sites you want. But I found that at the range, all of these, the sites worked well. I was able to see them, pick them up, get on target, and use them effectively. I do like the advantage of having the tritium front sight on these two with the ring, so you can see it during the day, which a lot of tritiums kind of fade out to gray at night. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Probably not. That's probably about as good as it'll go, because it's wanting to pick up the back here. But the white, the plain white on the Glock is less useful at night, because it just becomes a black sight at that point. But 
Again, you can change any of the sights on these to whatever you want. So let's talk about triggers. So the Glock has pretty much the same trigger on every Glock that's out there. And one of the nice things about Glock is the consistency across the line. So whether I'm carrying the 26, which I pocket carry this. I'm in Florida, wear shorts all the time. Use like Ariat shorts have bigger pockets and I pocket carry this pretty much every day. But if I'm out hunting, I've got the same trigger on my Glock 40 for when I'm 10 millimeter for when I'm hunting hogs or something like that. So there is a consistency. But here's what it is. Here's your take up. A very distinct, crisp break. Relatively short reset. Not the shortest reset on the planet. This thing's not like a PPQ. But you're right on the wall and again with the break. Now if I move to the reflex, there's a little more take up and it's kind of a squishier feel because of the pivoting trigger, but it's not significant. And then it has a crisp but shorter break. Kind of a longish reset. It's almost all the way out. And then you've got a little bit of take up, kind of a little bit squishy, and then a break. It's got a nice trigger. The Glock trigger is a little more defined. This one's a little bit softer. Now I'm gonna to go to the Hellcat, but I'm gonna bring out this Hellcat Pro I've got here because I don't want the cosmetics of this trigger to influence it that it's got an unfair advantage. So this one here is exactly the way it came from Springfield, so it will be apples to apples. You have the inertial toggle. You have a kind of a short-ish take up. It's a little bit crunchy, but not, not significant. A short crisp break. Here's the reset. It's a nice short reset. The brake is a little bit better feeling than the Glock and the reset's a little shorter than the Glock. And then you're, again, you're right on the wall and it breaks. So all three of these have very similar triggers, very functional triggers. And I would say that the trigger would not make a difference on any of the three of these as far as, is, am I gonna be able to use one or the other? And if I hadn't told you that this was a internal hammer fired gun and you watched me mess with the trigger, you probably wouldn't have picked up on it because they really designed it well. It doesn't have any of the characteristics of a, like a classic DASA or anything like that. It does work kind of like a striker gun. On the FN Reflex, initially I wasn't a big fan of the trigger because it did have kind of this take up and then a little bit to get used to the break, but I got used to it. Once I got used to it, the trigger to me is fundamentally the equivalent to any of the others. They uh, have all been reliable, all three of these. Uh, the Glock proven track record. Springfield has been well known for reliability. In fact, they tested this one with like a 20,000 round uh, functional test and it performed flawlessly. And we all know FN's history is military reliability. They, FN makes a lot of military weapons, so their testing protocols and everything go along with that. So all three of these are known brands, known quality, and known reliability. So it's really going to come down to, do you want the smallest and lightest, which you'd be looking at the Hellcat, uh, or are you a Glock fan, or you just like the classic size and shape of the 26? But I don't think you could go wrong with any one of these. What I will say is Glock needs to up their game, because these new contenders are going to potentially be a real problem for Glock, especially this guy because you've got, you've got all the same capabilities as the Glock in a smaller, lighter footprint, more native cap cap capacity. They've got a pro version of this, which would be more similar to a thin Glock 19. So I think the Hellcat has got the potential if they keep doing what they're doing in the innovation on this, and Glock keeps not doing what they're doing, which is pretty much staying the same. Glock might be in some trouble with some of these, especially the Hellcat. I mean, if you didn't have anything today and you were shopping and you had nothing, you didn't weren't worried about trigger consistency with your hunting gun and all of that, uh, even though the FN Reflex is a good quality gun, I would almost say take a look at the Hellcat because of the three of these sitting on the table, I think this one is probably the leader of the pack. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Player, Rumble. We're pretty much everywhere. And thank you.